brothers and sisters, this is a very powerful message. And I come to you very close so you can see the seriousness to this message. This is the foolishness of God. I was walking down in the train tracks and the Holy Spirit told me to pick these nails. And when I picked these nails, he told me this is similar to what was used to nail Christ at the cross. Do you see the inches of these nails? He took these nails in, his, in the palms of his hand and his feet for the shedding of blood, for the sacrifice of sinners like us. Yet we still wake up in the morning and don't thank God for a new day. But I come to you as a slave, a servant, a friend to the Almighty God. And to wake your spirits up, and that you may wake up from your slumber, and that you may wake up and remember the God who sent his son as a precious gift. That God so loved that he gave. You love him so much, what do you give? Give him your heart. People look at this. This might be foolishness. But this is what the Son of God came to do. To be nailed for, for the sins of mankind. Do you know that you were nailed to sin? And he came and removed you and took your place. There's a deeper meaning behind the cross which I'm going to explain today. Now, in the book of 1 Corinthians... It says that for Christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel not with words of human wisdom lest the cross of Christ be emptied of his power that means there's power in the cross what Christ did I mean he took away sin he destroyed sin he destroyed condemnation he destroyed transgression he destroyed the past of Satan he took every sin in his body and destroyed it so that the preaching of the cross will be preached. There's power in the cross. When you preach, there's power. Hell shake when the cross has been preached. Because they know spiritually what happened. At the cross, what Christ did in the realm of the spirit. He took away every power of Satan. Now it says that the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But for us that are being saved is the power of God. That means that our salvation... It's not just a one-time thing. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you are justified. And then when you continue, the word of God will sanctify you. So that you walk in his righteousness. Then you will enter heaven, you are being glorified. That three segments to your salvation. Justification. Sanctification and glorification. There's nothing like one saved being saved forever. No. You are continuing to maintain your salvation. And it says, for it's written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent will be, will be frustrated. Where is, your, where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God, of God, of this world, through the wisdom he did not, he, he did him. i read it again. For things in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who, are belie those who believe. Jews demand miraculous signs. The Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who God has called, both Jews, Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men's wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than men's strength. But as think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by the human standard. Not many of you were influential. Not many of you were noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lonely things of this world and the despised things of, this, of, the, of the things that are not to notify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that we are 
in Christ Jesus, who has become us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. You know, people look at me, the way I look, the way I dress, the way I talk, and they laugh, they'll persecute me. They don't know where God brought me from. The Bible said, he that's forgiven more, who love more, he that's forgiven little, who love little. God brought me from jail, from prison, from a lifestyle of destruction. Like I've been destroyed in Hollywood and New York, somewhere in America, from drinking and smoking and drugs, gang, gambling. God brought me from a world. People don't know how many times he has saved my life, all the way from Africa to here. He called me to be his prophet, to preach the gospel, to preach the blood of Jesus, that washes sins and to preach the cross that he came, that rugged cross, that ancient cross. The church, you will not go into modern side. The cross is an ancient rugged cross. People can laugh. You can speak about me all you want. I'm not to please you. I'm to preach you and say that the spirit of God will convict you. Look at me. Am I, do I look like a person that looks like a preacher? God knows what he has called. I'm foolishness. But I'm preaching the truth. Now it says in Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus. To which the world has been crucified to me. And, 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 and the world to me. That means the world things I, I consider a loss. I'm been crucified to the world. I'm crucified. The Bible says in Galatians 2 verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lives in me. And the life I live in this body, I live to faith to the Son of God who died for me. That means that my worldly passion has been crucified. It's Christ that lives in me. Both in the heart and mind, Christ lives in me. Now, if we look at, this is one nice verse which I love. In 1 Timothy chapter 15, it says, here is a trustworthy saying. That deserve full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom, of whom I am the worst. But for this very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus may display his unlimited patience as an example for those who will believe on him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, mortal, invincible, the only God be honored, glory, for and ever and ever. There are some people that, that, that are not saved today that, that are going to be saved tomorrow by God's grace. I was the one, I didn't grow up a Christian my whole life, but God saved me three and a half years, and it was a radical transformation of the heart, and I did not look back again. Now, if you go to Ephesians, you must read this Bible. People are not reading this word. They, they, they want people to teach them. You, you, can, you have to read the word of God. People have been killed around the world for holding the Bible. You have a Bible in your house and there's dust in it. You can't read it. You lazy Christians. Wake up. And people tell me that I'm, I'm judging them. I judge your situation. I'm not going to judge you. You have a Bible in your house. Read it. Look at what it says here. But whatever was to me profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surprising greatness of knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God by faith. Now, I'm telling you the truth. You can do all the good works you want. You will still go to hell if you don't believe in Jesus Christ. It is his righteousness, this right standing that works in you. Brothers and sisters, why we will not preach the gospel? The Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive power to be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and the outermost part of the world. You know what I mean? Jerusalem representing your house, your family. Judea representing your friends, your neighbors. Samaria representing the people that are far away. The innermost places, going into the world and preaching it. Let the light of God shine there. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24 verse 14, and this gospel about the kingdom of God will preach as a witness to everyone and the testimony, and the end will come. The last sign is the gospel will preach to everywhere. So brothers and sisters, don't take the gospel and keep for yourself. Preach that gospel to your family. The cross will be preached. What Christ did on the cross is so powerful. I pray God will relieve, reveal it to someone in a dream. So I can see what Christ did. The visual raw footage and how he was nailed. How he was wounded and beaten. He did all of that for you. 
to go at that cross. So look at my friends very well. As a prophet of God, sent to preach the gospel as a prophet of the old and the apostles of the old, I am speaking with all my heart that remember the cross, with the cross must be preached. No one cannot be saved unless they understand the cross, that Christ Jesus Christ came as on human flesh, walked in this earth, and was crucified for your sins. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse, chapter 3, verse 16, that no one can deny the secret of our religion. He came in human flesh. He was seen by angels and was, and was, and was, and was confirmed by the Spirit of God, preached to all, all people. We cannot hold this back. 